Good morning. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mark, what do you say to people that say, um, hey, dude, um, when uh, when you quit this band thing, you know, when uh, when you gonna when are you, when are you gonna get a real job or something, you know, just because maybe you haven't been on the radar for a while or you know been relevant in the charts and that kind of thing, and I understand. I understand that line of questioning. I certainly do. And my question, my usual question back to that uh, inquiry is, well, would you tell a doctor or a lawyer, hey, dude, when are you going to stop doing that doctor or lawyering thing? You know, put a lot of years into this thing and a lot of divine intervention, a lot of luck has happened. So we've been able to get to this spot that we're in right now, you know? And there's no way I'm giving up my uniform and, and not makes do something that gives me supreme joy, extreme joy, you know? I literally do a job that I love, you know? I've never really worked a day in my life. Um, and I think what that kind of leads us to is the word nostalgia, you know, nostalgia. And a lot of bands don't like to sort of acknowledge the word nostalgia because it gives you a sense that I guess your your relevancy is over, okay? And in essence, it is. Not a lot of nostalgic bands come back and then have big hits. Uh, it's very rare. I think the Beach Boys did in 88 with Kokomo. Um, it's a very difficult thing to do because you are put out to sort of pasture, if you will. But nostalgia, to me, if you look up the word in the dictionary, or some of the most beautiful adjectives, adjectives you could ever have to describe something. You know, a longing of the past, fond memories, a wishing to go back. So I think nostalgia in terms of music in the music industry and, and regarding bands is it's the only industry where nostalgia is looked at as kind of sad. You know, we look at our nostalgic athletes, say like a, a Michael Jordan or a, um, a Derek Jeter or... Um, Hell, a, uh, you, you know, a Jim Edmonds. We look at them with, you know, affirmation and when still adulation and, and all this amazing stuff. Cause remember what they did on the field when they were in their prime. You know, the difference between bands is that you get to watch us grow old. And that is kind of depressing. I got to say, you get fatter, you lose your hair, you get wrinkles, you do whatever, you know. And I think that is probably where the nostalgia creeps in and becomes a bit sad for bands. And also, let's be honest, performances diminish on stage. You can't sing as well. You can't move as well. Maybe you can't even play as well. So there's a lot of factors that go into nostalgia becoming kind of sad. So that's why I understand it being a um, a sad reality for bands to understand and maybe for, for fans to go, oh, you're kind of like a nostalgic band. But for me... I embrace the word nostalgia. I am so glad to be nostalgic. I am so grateful these songs mean something to people. And why do I say that? Because I hear the stories every day. And I'm so grateful that some of these songs we wrote 20, 25 years ago still mean so much to people that we get to tour the world, travel the world, still get to play today and make a living doing it. We beat the odds. We're 0.001% of the, of the bands on earth. And it has nothing to do with talent. It's just the right place, right time, a lot of luck, a lot of divine intervention, a lot of people that helped along the way. So I think that's the, the thing that always uh, kind of is the defining factor about nostalgia between music and other industries. You know, you don't look at an old dentist and go, oh, that's sad, he's 65. He's kind of a nostalgic dentist. He's a dentist, you know, but when you look at a lead singer and he's 65, you might go, oh, that's kind of sad. Because you remember when he was 20, his shirt was off, he was running around, he was good looking. Uh, but there's no way anybody that has ever felt the joy and excitement of writing a hit song and stepped on a stage and had those that, that song you wrote sung back to you by thousands of people will ever give this up. And that's why we keep doing it. And I say this with absolute respect. But if Wayne Gretzky could play a hockey today in the NHL, he'd be playing. If Michael Jordan would, could be playing in the NBA right now, he'd be doing it. Trust me. There's a reason why there's a seniors tour in golf, because they can do it. And that's the reason why we still do it. We can do it, and we love to do it. So no need to ever ask me, you know, if I'm still doing that band thing, I will always be doing that band thing. And and the goal, the the end game for me, I don't know. A Denny's and Barstow.
playing three sets a night, in the middle of playing fly for the third time in one of those sets. I'm about 78, 79 years old, and I just feel something in my chest. and go, Elizabeth, it's the big one. And just go face first into someone's Grand Slam breakfast in Barstow, California. And I had the best life I could possibly have. And I hope you have the best life you can possibly have, and the best day you can possibly have. It's Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Back to your regularly scheduled programming.